A Hymn to Childhood by Lee Young Lee is Lee recounting on his sort of childhood experiences and how he was sort of forced to grow up too fast. The intention of the poem is to describe how his childhood is sort of contrasted to many childhoods where he is forsaken the opportunity or he is not given the opportunity to sort of pretend and have a normal childhood, but rather is forced to deal with very difficult realities that experienced him uh, in his time in uh, China. And he uses uh, devices such as double entendres, uh, metaphors about a play and alliteration to sort of describe and explain the childhood that was sort of ripped away from him. So to start off the poem when asking these sort of questions about childhood and which childhood, he's sort of talking to himself about the various childhoods that he had, if any. The f saying the one that didn't last implies that his childhood was short. It was He was forced to grow up fast. It was sort of robbed him as his childhood. The last three lines of stanza one indicate the sort of traditional childhood that most people have and the, the sort of fears that they have within that, you know, uh, boarded up well in the backyard or ladder in the attic doesn't seem too bad, but obviously when you're pretending, it could have, it could be relatively scary. And then this is sort of contrasted to the beginning of stanza two, which talks about the childhood that sort of he had that persisted in his life, which is sort of presided by armed men and guards. And sort of the use of ill-fitting, I think, has a double meaning because it not only does it mean that the uh, guards were m maybe in uniforms that didn't fit them because of the lack of proper resources, but it also means that it wasn't fit for childhood in terms of it wasn't a normal childhood to have armed guards patrolling your streets and strolling through your alleys and sort of loudspeakers declaring a new era, sort of saying that the government in China is sort of having a massive control, almost a dictatorship, in terms of how things are going to, to operate. Now, sort of this uh, metaphor that he gives with the, the, the house, I think, is sort of uh, it's multi multifaceted in terms of you grew the house around you you grew bigger which is sort of he's feeling insignificant he's as things get bigger you seem you feel sort of smaller the rooms are getting farther farther apart I think that when people enter a new place they typically uh, it feels big bigger than normally and he feels out of place he feels insignificant and then I also think that sort of it's a metaphor for the country as a whole as Things are new, things are different, but it's also a metaphor for how he was feeling. Then, sort of talking about people missing is li the literal killing of people, but also sort of the lack of familiarity he had with people because of the situations that he was being forced into. Now, the photographs whispered, that's personification, and I think that the use of whispered is was particularly important because it's uh, sort of sneaky, it's secretive, it's hush. Uh, indicating that they're hiding something and sort of I think photographs whispering is saying that you know maybe the people who are in the photographs the families they're concerned about the future <clears throat> of uh, Lee and his family because of the potential separation that could sort of occur to them and then the cooking pot said your name I think is saying that they haven't used them in a while maybe that's because of the har uh, hardships or famine that it existed but it's sort of saying that they necessarily didn't use all their uh, their cooking supplies and were going through a difficult times. And he, this is magnified by him saying that they walked past the kitchen rather than going into the kitchen. Then, moving on to the next stanza, we have pretended to be dead with your sister has a double meaning because uh, in t childhood, children will often pretend to be dead or pretend to do certain things. But in this instance, it was something that they had to to do maybe to survive as to so that they wouldn't get prosecuted by uh, the government. Then we see that he's doing this with his sister, which sort of continues a motif of love between siblings or love between families that is ever so present within Lee Young Lee's poems. I think that um, that sort of rhetoric of games is that double meaning because it's, uh, you know, it, when children are young, families or parents might say, oh, you know, we're just playing a game. Uh, in difficult situations that they're facing. It's because they don't want to scare the children too much. And I think that the game of rescue and abandonment is weird because they're physically going through rescue and abandonment, but also it could sort of be a, 
revved up diction for something like hide and seek, right? You're going out and finding something or you're being left there to sort of never be found. And I think that that's showing that he, rather than something something as playful as hide, a, hide and seek, he played games of rescue and abandonment, which shows that his life, he was forced to grow up incre incredibly fast. Um, it's, uh, then it says, you learn to lie still so long. Uh, also has a double meaning because he learned not only to sort of, you know, physically be, uh, you know, silent or pause or rested, but he, you know, also sat back and watched what happened. Then we have sort of the introduction of the play metaphor as the world seemed to be a play that he viewed from the muffled safety of a wing, which shows that it's a drama that's acting out in front of him. Maybe it's because he couldn't pretend in his childhood, so now he has to pretend in real life in terms of what is happening. Then we have some alliteration that occurs later in the stanza. Servants, screaming, soldiers, shouting, the repetition of the S sound shows that there's sort of this repetition of bad events placing particular emphasis um, uh, on them. We also sort of see this continua continuation with smashing. Um, then uh, ma the smashing of the mother's china also has a double meaning because not only was the mom's, you know, uh, Tupperware plates physically smashed by the government, but also her country or in terms of her or where she had lived and uh, such. Uh, now, the next stanza of Don't Fall Asleep, I think, is continuing the, the play metaphor and its, con its evidence as each act opens or each act closes in uh, showing that it's still sort of a play that's a, a drama that's going out in front of him now. Uh, his mother reading letters maybe implies that when his father uh, went to jail, he was writing letters to his family, or that uh, each clock closes with a fallen father into the hands of uh, the pharaohs, that he's the father is sort of at the whims of the government, the, the leader of the government. We also have alliteration with fallen father, which sort of places emphasis on how he's no longer in control now. The next stanza, we have which childhood again, which is a repetition, and this time, though, he's talking about the one that never ends, maybe that childhood is sort of always with, it's always within us, but so for him, childhood was marked by hardships, there was no possibility for play, no cheerfulness, so maybe that's what persists with him into adulthood, oh, you're still a child, uh, slow to grow, this is sort of uh, opposite of what the first one said, which is the one that didn't last, so it's sort of, you know, in the, but the first one's talking about <clears throat> the traditional childhood. This one is the one that he had, that the one that continues with him. Sort of, we have then internal rhyme scream, slow, grow, snow, uh, placing emphasis on sort of the potential growth that he had and uh, how as a child he was still talking to God, still thinking these sort of pure thoughts, which is he then later changes in terms of his other poems where he talks about how he was childish to think and... Um, and sort of believing uh, in God. I also think the snow could represent some sort of purity that existed within him, some sort of naiveness, naive, naivety that uh, he, he had. Then we have a metaphor of a, a lighthouse, sort of God listening in a high ceiling house where he measures with one eye the waves, of, uh, the, the waves. and I think that it's a metaphor for sort of navigating hardships, which Lee Young Lee had to do uh, in his life. Then ending this stanza with uh, count on many fingers all the way to say me. Counting on fingers is something that children did, but his spin on it is that all the ways to say me in the different languages that he was sort of forced to learn. Then in the next stanza we have once again the repetition of which childhood, but this time it's the one that will never escape you, which means it's sort of the past informing the uh, informing the present. He sort of uh, calls himself slow as he didn't understand necessarily what is happening. Sort of a low song in the wind is potentially God's voice and necessarily a religion as a child is sort of thought, as a child he thought that a religion was necessarily true. The sort of grief in the herd dove at evening shows that there's hardships sort of for everything. This whole sort of stanza is emblematic of the representation of God and nature and sort of how you're given a situation and you need to sort of make the best of it and, and sort of towards the end of the stanza where he talks about uh, still slow to tell between memory from imagination. He's on inability to tell real from fake, which I think plays back into the whole play metaphor. Heaven 
from uh, here and now, hell from here and now, which shows that there are sort of smaller moments of goodness, but also uh, terrible times, but he cannot tell sort of the difference. And I think that he, him ending with death from childhood has two meanings. The first meaning is that he was sort of forced to grow up fast, but the second is that he doesn't know what exactly happened. And this is why he ends with sort of, and both of them from dreaming, because it's connected to sort of memory and his inability to have an exact or precise memory of what exactly happened.